on behalf of Access to Integrative Medicine Health Institute, also known as AIM, and the GW Office of Integrative Medicine and Health. Welcome to a mindfulness experience, everyone. AIM is a nonprofit organization with the mission to provide vulnerable and low-income communities with access to whole person health and wellness. GW uh, provides professional development, education, and community outreach to improve health and wellness, especially using integrative medicine. The facilitators for today are uh, Misha Kogan, who is the founder and executive director of AIM Health Institute. He is also the medical director of GW Center for Integrative Medicine and an associate professor of medicine at the GW School of Medicine and Health Sciences. He is going to be um, leading today with Dr. Eileen Yeager, who is a clinical professor of pediatrics at the University of Colorado Medical School. She's a member of AIMS Advisory Board, and she runs an integrative pain management clinic for children at Children's Hospital. She's been a mediator for 51 years and a meditation teacher for 27. She's going to offer some uh, practical stress reduction techniques today. And I'll turn it over to Misha. Thank you, Janet. Welcome, everybody. It's been a more than eventful week between um, Trump coming back to White House, uh, civilized debates, which were actually uh, pleasant to watch in contrast to the ones before this one's. Um, and there's just a lot of updates and news. So I don't have any specific theme today. I'm going to run quickly through a number of topics. As usual, please drop the questions in the chat box. And I will have some links that I'll be posting there as well. <laughs> so first thing, many of you are probably wondering about drugs cocktail, uh, drug, Trump's cocktail of medications that were prescribed to him. Of course, most of you by now quite well familiar with the fact that almost all of them we have discussed in this meeting. Just to remind you all, he was put on vitamin D, zinc, vitamin C, melatonin, uh, and what am I missing? Famotidine is not quite, we talked a little bit about it, but um, so those are the things that were already covered. Uh, I'm not going to cover the drugs that he received. I think that's sort of beyond the scope of here. Um, it's everybody's guess. Mine is just as good as everybody else's as to, you know, why he recovered so quickly and what helped him. But regardless, nonetheless, I think we do. Sh we should acknowledge, especially since on Wednesday, he posted the message stating that he will make all of the treatments he received free for the entire country. I don't know if this was a political talk, but uh, after that statement, I think all of us should request free supplements that I just described, and that would be a fair game. All right, I'm, I'm half joking. All right, so a couple of things that I thought were important to cover that is unrelated to this specific point. I've started to see more and more patients coming with a different mask problems. Um, all of them are different rashes. Um, most of the patients who are coming with those rashes on the face um, wear something synthetic. So a little word of caution. So if you're using the masks that have, especially the loops or the um, tying cables that go around to the back, made out of synthetic materials, doses so far I've been seeing as most common triggers of the rush. Um, so if that happens to you, a very simple uh, topical barrier of Vaseline, but better yet something more natural like a shea butter or co coca butter or even coconut oil, and uh, don't use synthetic materials. So get a cotton mask. I personally think that the well weared cotton mask is going to be just as protective as a standard surgical mask. So I, I, I wouldn't, um, Aretha, do you, you don't mind muting yourself because you have a strong background. Actually, I'm going to mute you myself. Okay. Um, and um, so that would probably be appropriate and, and much less likely to cause rashes. Um, so um, moving on, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm on a ro roll today. I wanna show you a little article so that I'm dropping right now in the chat. So 
Um, there are a couple of really incredible success stories with COVID. Uh, specific one I want to highlight is the Cuban um, Cuban success. As of July 1st, they had 80 deaths and 2,000 cases. And basically, by now, there's almost no significant add-on of deaths. So they basically arrested the progression, even though their expected numbers were supposed to be you know, pretty significant. So if you compare them to Brazil, U.S., um, Russia, or any other countries where there is a pretty high numbers, they have per million of people something like 100 times less infection and less deaths. Um, the article that I posted in the chat is pretty, you know, summarizes what they did. I think it's not just the fact that they have a number of different treatments, including interferon boosting medication that they've had for many years, but it's a process of um, strategical planning contact tracing, aggressive isolation, and uh, very early testing. So basically, where our government failed every step of the way, their socialistic society managed to save lives in hundreds of thousands, potentially. So, you know, yes, it's a much smaller country. It's hard to com c uh, compare, but it's an isolated island. And once disease is on the island with a much less physical space, you would actually to be expect more, not less of the infection, unless you put very aggressive measures in place. Um, so read the article that I posted. Um, I think it'll give you some sense of sort of how they did it at the very uh, limited, of course, there are a lot poorer countries, so their resources are a lot more limited, but how they managed to do all that. It's a pretty fascinating. Um, Okay, and then the last quick topic for today um, is the uh, different filtering systems and um, humidifiers. So we're coming on in a much cooler, drier period. Uh, those of you who are going to have, like if you have every winter, if you have slight respiratory symptoms, um, sneezing, dryness of the mouth and the nose, if you have, if that causes a little bit of coughing and all those things. I think it's important we try to minimize it this season because those are the things that potentially can predispose you to getting a um, flu and COVID. So I would say if you don't filter the air in a house and you do have any kind of allergic symptoms or um, anything that you think may be related because there's a dust or mites or anything that triggers uh, symptoms, I think the filtering of the air, especially in your bedroom during the night, makes a lot of sense. Um, there are a variety of different filters. I usually say, look at the, don't buy anything on either spectrum. So don't buy the filters that are less than $100 and don't buy filters that are say over $1,000. Anything in between is a fair game. I'm gonna give you a couple of links of the products that are kind of in a different range. So the, um, I think it's called Honeywell, which is a very standard set of filters. You can buy them anywhere. They're on a lower spectrum. The ones that I quite often use, recommend for my patients is Air Doctor. I'm gonna type it. And also Austin Air Filters. Um, Air Doctor is a little cheaper, Austin Air Filter is a little bit more expensive, five, six hundred dollars. But the, the advantage of all these filters is that they also filter uh, any <clears throat> chemical toxins that are in the air. So if you, I don't know, and, and the smells too. So if you have something that's like a recent uh, paint that you put on the floor uh, and you want to filter that smell, that would be uh, appropriate because the charcoal filters that are built into both of those filters would work. And then for the humidifiers, I don't have any preferred brand. Those are a lot cheaper. I do suggest that if you're doing this, if you're going to use it continuously, probably getting a little bigger uh, water container would make more sense. So maybe get a, at least a gallon because those, those smaller ones will run out quickly. Uh, I, I'm talking about this because my younger kid has a lot of nasal symptoms when the air gets dry. So we always have 
humidifier running in his room, but we also heat the house with a wood stove. So that also dries the air even more. So we also have some, um, like a basically a little metal bucket that's sitting on top of the stove to increase evaporation of water. So those are my brief things for today. I know I went really fast. I do expect questions about all of this, so feel free. And if anybody wants to unmute and ask the question, um, just go and do it as well. Okay, Luan, we have been suffering from smoke from the forest fire out here. So meaning in Oregon, I'm, I'm assuming. Uh, this recommend, yes. So Luann, either of those filters will actually help you to filter the uh, smoke as well. Um, I'm not sure which one is better. Um, it's a, you know, you want to do a little bit of a personal research. They're not cheap though, right? I mentioned some of the price. The other reason that they're not cheap is um, you have continuous cost of uh, filter replacement. So charcoal and the HEPA filters both have to be replaced. And the more you use them, the more frequently you're going to replace them. Um, oh, I also forgot to mention that some air filters come with the UV lights and there has been increasing amount of information that UV lights may be able to kill off the COVID virus particles. I don't know if there's enough data for that, but if the, if you're not seeing a much of a bump in the price and there is a um, UV light built in, I'm not sure if there's any harm in that, so to speak. Okay, uh, moving on with questions. Linda posted, uh, for whom, if anyone, would you recommend the flu shot this season? Okay, so this we covered in great detail last weekend. So everybody should get a flu shot this year, unless you have a very specific allergy. And by everyone, I mean everyone. Usually the recommendation is only people over 65, healthcare workers, or somebody with a chronic disease. Um, but otherwise, this year I would say everybody should get it. People who are over 65 should get what's called a high dose flu shot compared to regular. I do recommend everybody to get uh, preservative free. You just have to ask uh, in the pharmacy, they're supposed to have them. In fact, uh, my understanding, there's a legal mandate to have a preservative free uh, um, option in every pharmacy. You don't need a prescription. You just walk into a pharmacy, give them your insurance card and any, uh, any flu shot should be covered with every single insurance. I, I hear from a lot of my patients that there's a lot of uh, uh, back, um, back ordered single shot or preservative free flu shots. Um, search around, that's all I can say. You should be able to find a pharmacy that carries it. So when you call, you just ask, I want a single shot or single uh, vial preservative free. And those of you over 65, you should ask for high dose. Everybody else should ask for a regular dose. So that's 60 seconds coverage. Um, can we use the filter and humidifier? That's exactly what I'm doing. You don't want to put them next to each other, okay? Because they, uh, one will suck the, the <laughs> moist air from the other. So put them in our different types, different corners of the same room. Okay, so if you have already compromised immune system, is the vac no, it's the opposite. If you have a compromised immune system, you must get a shot. It's even more important. In fact, there is a pretty good data saying that when you get a, any vaccine, you're probably upregulating your immune system for a short period of time. So that's additional boost in protecting you. There has been pretty significant interest in looking at um, people who've been vaccinated with a certain vaccine before COVID appear to have a lower risk. There's not enough data to say which vaccine are the best or, and it's unrelated to the, by the way, to COVID, just any vaccine. And the thinking is that when you take any vaccine, especially those of you who, myself included, I just had a, I just had a vaccine on Tuesday, um, usually, in the past, when I would get a vaccine, I'd get 24 hours of a high-grade fever up to 103. Uh, this year, it was a low-grade fever, but I went in a sauna early in the morning after the shot, sat there for an hour, sweated profusely, and, and I, the fever never went further up. 
So versus Dr. Osser, I'm sure it's okay if I say that, um, who got the shot the following day was basically out of commission the following day with a kind of a really significant flu symptoms. Again, that's probably worth taking. You're not gonna feel that bad for more than a day. Um, and again, if your immune system is already compromised, it's even more important to take the shot. Um, and again, the, the whole thing, preservatives, which I agree with. So thimerosal is unnecessary substance in the vaccine, in my opinion. You can definitely ask for the vaccine, uh, the option that does not contain it. Um, yeah, so for people with a mass vaccine is no, not, not a problem. Again, do not take the one with the preservatives. Um, okay, uh, pharmacists will put you on the waiting list. Uh, Judy, can you say more? Is that what they do now? I did not know that. Yeah, the pharmacist and several of the pharmacies who were out last week put me on a waiting list and I heard back from them this week um, okay. because they are so limited. So um, they're getting stuff in, but it goes really, really quickly. So they call the waiting list first and then they open it to everybody else. Great. Okay, thank you. Yeah, th don't panic about this. If you can't get it right now, it's okay. There, there's, the, the flu is not here yet. So we should be starting now before the six months to cover us into the spring. But if you don't get it for two weeks, nothing's going to happen. Chances are. Don't kill me if you get sick, though. All right. What is, if, uh, what is the efficacy rate? I, <laughs> Linda, uh, it, it, I can't answer that. I mean, it's been all over the place. There's been some years where flu vaccine was as high as 60, 70%. Some years where it was down to 25, 30. There's no way to predict that. They're always aiming at 55, at 50 plus percent. Are they successful this year? We'll, we'll have to see. By the end of the year, efficacy is never more than 20 per 25 percent. But that's by the end of the year. At the beginning, it's usually a lot higher. All right. Um, I'm not sure what the what uh, Cecile. That's that's not true. There are definitely uh, uh, preservative free uh, senior vaccines single vial. There, there's no question about it. We have one at the at the university. I mean at the GWMFA. There are definitely at least two options. So if you if the if you're not hearing though that they exist, just move on to another pharmacy. Keep calling, Judy. You got one from where? Because I know Judy got a... I got, I got mine from Rite Aid, but I was also told all of the Walgreens have preservative-free, that they don't carry anything um, with preservatives. And they show you right on the box. Yeah, so that's really important. You want them to show it to you. So sh have them show you that it's a single vial. They literally look like uh, all they need to do is they take a syringe, attach it to the vial or itself. The vial has a plunger in there, and then that's what they inject. That's what you want. Hi, hi. Um, this, the CVS box I saw, it says adjuvanted on it. Well, I, I'm not, you, you just have to ask them. They're not going to, they're just automatically going to give you multi-dose vial, multi-use vial. I thought that CVS has, Walgreens was, Walgreens was out, but the pharmacist said theirs is adjuvanted as well. I not sure. I don't know. I mean, I can't comment on that, but I do know that there's. Hi, Misha. This is Lee. I just want to say real quick that adjuvant is just what is added to a vaccine to make it work. Um, so you can't get a vaccine without adjuvant. And Dr. Kogan, no, you can get them without adjuvants. And Dr. Kogan, you said that an adjuvant was mercury. No, 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 no. I said uh, it preserves it if it's a thimerosal, not the adjuvant. Adjuvant is what's added in there for the efficacy. The preservative contains thermerosol. So we, we can take the adjuvant in then? You can. Okay, I, I thought you had said not to take the adjuvant in. No, and, I never said that. And, and the vaccine that is not for seniors comes both in adjuvanted and non, and non adjuvanted. That part, I don't, I'm not exactly sure. That's why I wasn't answering exactly your question because I don't actually know the difference between okay. and I'm only, I'm only talking about the mercury, thimerosal. And thimerosal, if you're seeing the vial that has 10 vaccines in it, it's guaranteed almost, well, not 100%, but 
most of the adult vaccines will have thimerosal, pediatrics will not. Uh, so to avoid this issue, so you don't, you just basically asking for a single vial preservative free. That's all you need to tell them. Okay. And beyond that, I don't think that there is real, oh, I can sh you show you guys, hold on a second. I'll show you a table real brief since we're on. One second, I'll share my screen with you in a second. Okay, I think it's okay that I'm sharing this. So everybody seeing the screen? So whenever you see this, um, this is MDV, is a multivial. And then PFS is a single vial. So there's lots of single vial choices. And that's what you need to ask. Now, the only, sorry, I'm sorry. It, right, so that is correct. So you see how some of them have preservatives. So this multivial will have, the others will not. Okay. And then the, the doses are per box, but you need to see what's in the box. So if the vial can only one vial, that's 10 doses. Other boxes will have each dose separately packaged inside the box. Is, is PFS preservative free? Correct. Okay. Lee, thanks so much for helping with the edge event. I should have looked it up. <laughs> hey, that immunology degree comes in handy every once in a while. Exactly. Okay. Um, I want to finish in a minute or two. So I'm just going to run through. I took already too much time. What's the risk with preservative? I mean, it, it's the mercury is mercury in there and you get 25 micrograms. It's not a lot. The one, four ounces of tuna gives you 50 micrograms of 40, but it's oral versus injectable. So, you know, I'm just, because there's so much concern, I just want to say that because of that, I'm, I'm avoiding it. Uh, pneumonia vaccine. Okay, you guys, I'm going to skip this because it's a very individualized answer. People over 65, there's a specific guidelines, so I don't think I can detail answer to that. Is there any significance in having absolutely no reaction to? Yeah, that's perfectly normal. Most people will have no reaction whatsoever. That's good. I mean, that, that, that doesn't mean you're not responding to it, you know, and it also doesn't mean that your immune system is weaker or stronger. It's just individual variation of a response. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Um, does the pneumonia shot have preservatives? Same. I think the pneumonia shots also come in different options. Again, try to get preservative free if you can. Uh, all flu vaccines have some formaldehyde. I've never heard of this. Why would flu shot have formaldehyde? It, it, there cannot be formaldehyde in a reconstituted anything. If they take a powder, put normal saline with, in the, that, that there's no, why would there be formaldehyde? Mm -hmm. So if it's a question, I'd say absolutely no to the end to that. Dr. Kogan, that's, if you look at the flyers and the inserts for the um, flu vaccines, you'll see formaldehyde is in all of them. Yeah, it's a process of making that contains formaldehyde that at the end is filtered out. And so you have a trace amounts, you have trace amounts of formaldehyde in 99% of the foods on the market because of the all, you know, if they're in a package, they're in a can, all of the, a lot of the times you have processes where certain chemicals are used either to clean something or on a site. It doesn't mean that, you know, they just have to list by law everything in there. Like if you look at in California labels, you have uh, every label, every food containing lead. Look it up if you don't trust me. They, because they require anything growing in the ground to have a lead on a label because there's always a trace lead in the ground that gets transferred into the foods. It doesn't mean that there's an actual, any significant quantity present to be concerned of the health, for the health. Okay, I think that's our, my time. I don't wanna take more time from Eileen. So Dr. Yeager, if you don't mind, I'm gonna mute myself. And if we have a couple of minutes at the end, I'll answer remaining questions. Thanks, Nisha. Well, I am, um, I've been meditating for 51 years, which blows my mind, and teaching it for 27. And I decided, 
that because everybody is so stressed out now, what I'm going to offer today are a few short stress reduction practices. Some of them are actually little mini meditations and some of them are breaths. And uh, I've sent the handouts to Janet. So if you're interested, contact her afterwards and you can get them. Uh, you know, there's good stress and there's bad stress. Good stress is stuff like getting a promotion at work, having a baby, uh, winning the lottery. Yeah, right. Um, bad stress is stuff like being laid off, having an illness, um, having a very bad fight with somebody. So there, there really are differences, but they're both stressful. And stress is necessary for us to get through life. If we didn't have any stress, we wouldn't know how to respond. And these are things that start when you're a child and continue through your adult life. But when stress becomes chronic, it can cause all kinds of medical problems, which we're, I'm not going to go into. And everybody, everybody that I've spoken to in the last two weeks has brought up how anxious they are about what's going on, even though I don't, I don't start by asking. So what I'm gonna start with is something that I devised 50 years ago. It's called Dr. Eileen's Five Minute Stress Reducer. And it's sort of a combination like a little guided imagery and, and uh, meditation. Um, and you just become, get in a comfortable position, keep your feet on the, on the ground if you're sitting, um, uncross your hands and put them either on your thighs or on the arms of a chair or on a table, but someplace that's comfortable. Uh, and then you tell yourself you're going to do it. You don't have to because I'm, I'm leading it. But you tell yourself when you're doing it that, that you'll only do it for five minutes. If necessary, you can set an alarm on your cell phone if you uh, want to. So close your eyes. Take one deep breath in and out slowly. And now stiffen your body, contracting all your muscles for two seconds and then relax quickly. So that is push your feet against the floor, push your hands against whatever they're resting on, stiffen your body up, count to two, and flop, just flop. Let your shoulders drop. Let your head fall forward if it wants to. Let your back slump a little. And with your eyes closed, gently lift your eyes, if you're able to, have them converge looking at the bridge of your nose with your eyes closed. Now that's not easy for some people. So if it's, if it's difficult, just lift your eyes straight up gently with your eyes closed. And what this does is puts you in alpha rhythm which is a relaxed, more relaxed uh, brain state. Now, imagine yourself in a beautiful place in nature, either a place that you've been to, or a place that you'd like to visit, or a place from your imagination, a place where you feel relaxed and comfortable and safe. Feel the air on your cheek. It's just the air temperature you like best. Now look around in your beautiful place in nature. See what's there and see if you're enjoying being there alone or with any other people or animals or any other beings. It feels so relaxing to be there. Now listen to the sounds in your beautiful spot. Maybe you'll hear birds singing or the wind in the trees or the ocean. It depends on where you are. And smell the smells in your lovely spot. Maybe you'll smell flowers or pine trees or the ocean. Again, it depends on where you are. Now enjoy feeling relaxed and comfortable in your special beautiful sanctuary in nature. Breathe slowly, and with every breath, feel refreshed, calm, and comfortable. If extraneous thoughts intrude, they probably will, just recognize them, don't be upset at yourself, and go back to relaxing in your beautiful place in nature. 
I'll tell you when the five minutes are up. And keep your eyes lifted up gently as you do this. Okay, now become aware of yourself in the chair or wherever you're sitting. Feel the chair against your body. Feel your feet. You might want to uh, wiggle your fingers and toes a little bit. Take a deep breath. And as you breathe out, slowly open your eyes and come back here and sit quietly. The good feeling that you have from relaxing in your beautiful spot in nature, that good feeling will last all day. Okay, now open your eyes, come back here, become more alert. I wanted to just say this is a practice that's very, it was only five minutes from the time you started. It clears your circuits. It's very good to use if you have sensory overload, like if you're overloaded at work or if you're very busy at home and you're multitasking or if lots of people are asking you to do things at the same time. It really helps to clear the circuit. I devised this when I was a pediatrics intern and we would work very, very hard for 36 hours on. And in the middle of the night, I would sometimes, I used to go in the bathroom because nobody would follow me in there and um, do this little practice. Uh, and it really gives you a second wind, which can last for several hours. So uh, this has a good, um, this, has, this has been used successfully for over 50 years when overloaded, tired, or stressed. And I still use this with my patients and with friends, uh, and they say it's really good because it only lasts for five minutes. So um, I hope you enjoy it. If you wanna do it, you know, you have to be in a place where you won't be disturbed for the five minutes. And obviously you can't do it when you're driving. But um, if you want the handout, uh, ask Janet. Are there any questions before we uh, go on? Any questions about this? If so, please just unmute yourself and talk because I can't see all of you. I don't have a question, but I liked it and I wish I had it sometime last week, one day, it would have helped me because I was running around trying to do many things. So thank you. Well, I hope you can use it in the future. 
I will. There'll be plenty of, of opportunities. I will. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, the next practice that I'm going to do is actually adapted from something from the uh, Center for Healthy Minds at the University of Wisconsin, which is where Richie Davidson, who is um, one of the, most, the foremost meditation researchers in the world, that's his center. This was devised for older children, but it turns out it's wonderful for little kids and it's great for adults. And what I've done is to teach this to almost all of my integrative pain patients. And I asked the parent to do it also if they'd like to. And one of the parents called me up uh, a few days later and she said that she had just learned this from me she had a very unpleasant interaction at work with her boss, put her hands in her lap and did the practice, which we're going to do. Um, and it calmed her down right away. And a lot of people, both children and adults have said that if they're having trouble falling asleep at night, uh, you just do this in your bed. It takes just a few minutes and it's very relaxing. It grounds you in your body and it helps you to calm down. And what it's called is tracing your hand with breaths so that uh, you don't need any special equipment, just your hands. And what I will do is show you how to do it and let's just do it. The idea is you do it slowly. We're gonna trace our fingers up and down, correlated with breathing in and out. What some people say that it, you start to get tingling. Some people say it tickles. Some people say it just feels like I'm touching my hand. No big deal. It doesn't matter. There's no right and wrong. But what you're doing by breathing in and out slowly as you touch your fingers is to feel yourself grounded in your body and the slow breathing helps you to relax. So start by lifting up one hand and taking the index finger of the opposite hand, putting it on your wrist at the base of your thumb. And we'll be tracing the side of the finger, not the top, not the bottom, the side of the finger. So take a big breath in slowly and move your hand up to the tip of your thumb as you breathe in. Okay. Now breathe out as you go down the other side into the finger web. Breathe in up the side of your index finger, breathe out, down the index finger, breathe in, up the middle finger, breathe out, down the middle finger, breathe in, up the ring finger, breathe out, down the ring finger, Breathe in, up the pinky, breathe out, down the pinky, all the way down to the wrist. Now put your hands in your lap and just tune in to how you're feeling. You don't have to say anything, just did you feel anything like tingling or tickling or pressure or nothing much? Again, it doesn't matter. Do you feel connected to your body? Makes you aware that you have a hand, but it also makes you more grounded in your body. And that's useful, for example, if somebody has insomnia, they're lying in bed and their mind is racing. If you do this, you get focused into your body and you stop thinking about the babble that's going on in your head while you're doing this. And it calms people down. Also, if you have pain, it, it's a relaxer for pain. Okay, now we're gonna do it on the other hand. Same thing, but I'm not gonna talk. So put your index finger at the wrist, the base of your other thumb, and start breathing in slowly. The trick is to do it slowly. As you go up the side of the finger, and down slowly as you go down the side of each finger. And be present to what you're feeling.
Somebody's unmuted. I can hear someone talking in the background. It's not from me. Okay. And as you do the last finger, the pinky, all the way down to the wrist. And put your hands in your lap when you're done. And just tune into how you feel. Any questions? Yes, I have a question, Eileen. Um, does it matter which direction one would go on your hand from thumb to pinky, or may you also go from pinky to thumb? That's a good question. I learned it from thumb to pinky, and that's the way <laughs> I always do it. I don't know. You could try it both ways well, and see if it makes a difference. It, it just happened that I, I did no, the second time I went from my pinky to my thumb and um, it seemed okay. to feel the same okay. and I really reacted. Um, I felt the same. Uh, I felt grounded with each way myself. I don't, and um, this is amazing for me. It really worked very well. Thank oh, you. Good. Well, I, you know, if it works going backwards, I don't see why it shouldn't, <laughs> but you're still doing the breathing in as you go up the finger and the, exhaling as you go down the finger. Um, just correct. play around with it and see. The other thing is that you can repeat this as often as you need to, especially like if you're lying in bed, um, you know, you can just do it. Children tell me they, they really like it. And mm -hmm. the adults have, have, I've tried it myself in bed and it, it really does relax, makes me, my body sinks into the bed more when I'm mm -hmm. focusing on it. And because mm -hmm. you're paying attention to the practice, you're not thinking about anything that might be buzzing through your head at the time. So Exactly. I, th I do think that that made a big difference because I do have a hard time focusing or not focusing as the case may be. So thank you. Well, this is simple, short, and it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, uh, Janet will have a handout on it if you ask. Okay. I think it's already in the chat also. Thank you, Janet, putting that in. She put it in. Oh, okay, great. I don't see it in my chat. Okay. Um, the next thing I would like to do is, uh, it, I think it's a yoga breath, actually, but I learned it as the snake breath. It, it's a wonderful. This is my favorite of all of the breathing practices. And breath control, as you probably know, is one of the absolute best ways of reducing stress and pain. Um, this is my favorite breath. Within one or two breaths, it relaxes pain and anxiety. Um, sometimes people start to laugh when they do it, actually. And before I teach it to you, um, I got uh, an award for this work that I do at the hospital. And they, uh, it was given at the medical staff meeting. They asked me to explain very briefly what I did. So I just said a few words, and then I said, I'm going to leave you with the snake breath. So there were 700 physicians in a room doing this breath, and everybody cracked up as they exhaled. So uh, it was really fun, and I highly recommend it. Again, you can't really do it while you're driving, but um, let's do it. So what you do is you sit up, have your back straight. You start by blowing out the stale air. Let me tell you first, and then we'll do it. You start by blowing out the stale air from your mouth. You only do that the first time. Then you inhale through your nose, filling up your lungs. And then as you exhale you, through your mouth, you hiss the breath out the way a snake would hiss until the breath is all gone and you drop your shoulders at the same time. So let me do it once and then we'll do it. Watch me. That's it. Now your breath obviously has to be what's correct for you, not the timing that's right for me. 
and we repeat it five or seven times. You become calmer each time, and it's okay if you start to laugh. So let's do it. And again, you only blow the air, the air out the first time. The rest of it, it's just inhale through your nose and hiss it out. Okay, let's start. I'll do it with you, but do it at your own rate. Inhale fully through your nose. And hiss and drop your shoulders. When you, when you reach the end of your breath, inhale again. So do it at your own rate. I'll count my own seven times, but yours may not correlate and that's okay. Okay, that was my last seventh breath. So let's uh, stop even if you haven't finished. Just sit quietly, tune into how you feel. Did anybody laugh? A lot of the kids laugh. The adults, not so much, but it's okay if you do. Okay, any questions about this one? Yes, I'm not sure I understand. You pull the air out and then breathe in, and then when you hiss, you take it out again? Yes. Or you hit it in? You no, know, you have to hiss on the way out. So that is, you fill up just the first time, you blow out through your mouth, only the first time. Yeah. You inhale through your nose, breathe in through your nose, and then hiss out through your mouth, making the hissing noise as you breathe out till the breath is all gone. So it's inhale through the nose quietly, and then as you breathe out, and you drop your shoulders. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now the last thing, I'll have to do this a little fast because it's 1251. Okay. Um, you may have had somebody a few weeks ago doing something with self-compassion. I'm not sure, but this is what I call the self-compassion break. And if somebody's feeling very anxious or very worried or stressed, which people are now, last few weeks certainly, it's, it's, a, it's a way to be kind to yourself and to understand that everybody has problems. You're not alone. You're part of a group and that suffering is part of life. And this... Uh, so what we're gonna do, this is a five minute practice. Um, you can, you can draw, draw it out to be longer, but I'm gonna keep it because of time constraints, I'll keep it down. Okay, so the first thing we do is think of a situation in your life that is difficult and causing you stress. Call the situation to mind and see if you can actually feel the stress and the emotional discomfort in your body. Now say to yourself, this is a moment of suffering. This acknowledgement is a form of mindfulness of simply noticing what's going on for you emotionally in the present moment without judging that don't judge the experience as good or bad you just say 
this is a moment of suffering. Or if it feels more natural for you to use different words, you can say, um, this hurts, or this is stress, whatever phrase uh, resonates with you. Use whatever statement feels most natural to you. And it's recognizing that you're, that you're uncomfortable and that you're suffering. Now say to yourself, suffering is a part of life. This is a recognition of your common humanity with others, that all people have difficult experiences and these experiences give you something in common with the rest of humanity rather than marking you as abnormal or deficient in something. Everybody, everybody has difficult experiences. And if, if you don't want to say suffering is a part of life, a few other choices are other people feel this way. I'm not alone. We all struggle in our lives. Or you may have a phrase of your own that feels most natural. So let's do that. Okay, now put your hands over your heart. Feel the warmth of your hands and the gentle touch on your chest and say, May I be kind to myself. This is a way to express self-kindness or self-compassion. You could also consider if there's another phrase that would speak to you better. And some examples would be, may I give myself the compassion that I need. May I accept myself as I am. May I learn to accept myself as I am. May I forgive myself. May I be strong. May I be patient. These are some examples. And again, you pick what fits for you. The other thing that you can do if you like is after you put your hands on your heart, give yourself a big hug. Just give yourself a big hug. The people, the, and the groups that I've done this with, most of the adults really like to do that. Just hug you can rock back and forth if you want you don't have to do it you can just keep your hands on your chest but i like this and so the three parts of self-compassion which are mindfulness that is being aware that you're suffering common humanity you're not alone other people have their own issues and self-kindness those are all part of this very short practice and really can help you feel better. So you can do it any time of day or night. In fact, I recommend doing all of these things when you're feeling good, because if you practice something when you're feeling okay, then when you need it for stress or anxiety or pain, you get into the relaxed place faster. Okay. And this is called the self-compassion break. This is from the Greater Good Science Center and Dr. Kristen Neff, if any of you are aware. She has, she's a psychologist who's done uh, a great deal of research on self-compassion. We tend to be very hard on ourselves and we have to recognize that we need the kindness, even at times when it's not stressful. It's nice to be nice to yourself. Okay. Any questions about this one? All right, I'm done. Thank you, Eileen. Yeah, we're running out of the time. No, you still have two minutes according powerful. to my clock. Okay. Uh, it's a powerful practice. Thank you so much. Um, and I think that is it for today. Um, so I, I'm sure you guys have questions. Um, but we'll see you all next week. And by the way, um, those who were still wondering what adjuvant is, I'm going to post something about it in for everybody.
that's the official CDC website describing everything. And you will notice very small amounts of certain chemicals which are minute. For example, formaldehyde at present at the amount, our body makes up to 45 grams of formaldehyde per day and the vaccines contain less than a microgram. So it's really an irrelevant amount completely since we make internally formaldehyde by the living life. And thank you, Eileen, again. Uh, everybody have a wonderful weekend. Please catch some sun. Um, it's getting cool, at least in our area here in DC. Not getting cool here, it's 86 in Denver. Like you, 15 we, degrees above the average for this time. We had, so I'm going out in the sun. It was 45 this morning, yeah. yeah. But you had snow a few weeks ago. We had that was bizarre, yes, sure. we did, and it melted in a day. Mostly, it's been above normal. It's not good for the planet, but it feels good. Thank you. I'll be back. I'm gonna do some more things in a month. I've been invited, great. So we'll do different we'll ones. Down. That's right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.